Cascadar has a really powerful Python API which you can use to extend the existing functionalities. You can automate processing tasks in bulk, like importing and exporting your animations, retargeting or setting up your scene. You don't have to be a Python expert to get started, but a basic understanding of the syntax is necessary. I'm also still a beginner in this, but hopefully I can share with you some tips and tricks I've learned while writing a couple of scripts for Cascadar. First, First in this video I will cover the basics that can help you get started and where you can learn more about the API. Then in the next videos we will go through some examples that can be useful for you and some tips that can help you with add-on development or creating more advanced stuff. Before we dive in, I'm excited to share that Cascader has offered a 30% discount for both indie and pro subscriptions if you use my promo code. This offer will be available for a couple of weeks, but don't worry if you miss out on it because my usual 15% discount will still be available afterwards. More info in the description or in the pinned comment. First, let's talk about the resources and probably the best way to learn is by looking at the scripts available in the install folder of Cascader. First of all, there is the samples folder where you can find examples of moving objects, showing dialogues, exporting scenes and the most basic things you probably need. And there is also the comments folder which contains the scripts Cascader executes when you choose any of the comments option. I will also link the relevant pages in the documentation which you can give you a quick overview of the API and you can also find an auto-generated API reference documentation. I used it quite a lot since you can easily search for functions between the different submodules here but I found that in some cases the documentation is not up to date and there are things missing or things have changed since then but I will soon show you a way that you can get up-to-date information about functions right inside Cascader. Let's open the Python console from the Windows menu. This will open a very basic editor where you can write, load, save and execute your script. And by basic I mean really basic, it lacks a lot of functionalities that you would expect from a code editor. If you only need a couple of line of codes, it's good enough, so for this video it will be fine. But if you plan to write your own code, I would recommend using VS Code or PyCharm or whatever you prefer. Anyway, let's type our first First line here which as you read every programming tutorial we will print out something but instead of hello world how about we do something actually useful like checking what python version is used by Cascader. For this we will need to import the sys module and then we can print out sys.version. And if we execute the script by clicking the execute, seemingly nothing happens, but if you check the event logs, there will be a new entry here, and it shows that we have Python version 3.11 currently. Almost everything you want to display will be displayed here. You will probably use this a lot when experimenting or debugging your code. So we now know that the currently used Python version is 3.11. This can be important especially if you want to use external Python modules, but we will cover that in a later video. Python comes with a lot of really powerful built-in libraries and functions, and one of the functions that we will use is the help function, which can be used to get information about modules, classes, or functions. So if we don't know how the print function works, for example, or what kind of parameter it accepts, we can simply type help and call it on the print function. And if we execute it, you can see that the print function has an optional parameter, a separator and an end character. And of course, you can use the help functions with objects and methods of Cascader's Python API. And to interact with Cascader, we will need the CSC module, which is imported by default in the console. First, I will make the event log bigger because we will display a lot of information and and clear it. And now we can call help on the CSC module, which is imported by default. So now if we type help CSC, there will be a lot of information displayed here. It seems like there is a bug here. When a large text is logged, it requires clicking inside for full display when I scroll up. Because of this, I'll showcase the printed message in VS Code. As you can see, we got a lot of information about the main module and especially what submodules are available for us. 
One of the main one is the APSA module. It contains a high-level logic for working with the application as a whole. Let's call help on it as help csc.app. We can see that it provides different managers like the action manager, data source manager, scene manager. For example, we can use the scene manager for closing the scenes or switching between them, the tools manager to access different tools, for example, the FBX importer and exporter or rigging tools. So let's take a look first at the scene manager class. So I will now call help on cascader.app.scene manager. Since there is much less information, the event log is displayed correctly. I just realized I haven't covered how to interpret the output of the help function, so let me quickly introduce Python type hints. It's quite straightforward, so let's dive into an example. Here we can see that the scene manager class has a method called scenes. Self is a reference to the instance of the class itself. In Python, methods within a class need to have the self as the first parameter to reference the instance they belong to. After the semicolon, you can see the expected type of this parameter, which is the class itself. This is more obvious if we we'll take a look at the next example at the set current scene method. Besides self, it also expects one additional parameter, the scene object you want to set. And the part after the arrow indicates what type of objects the method is expected to return. In in this case it's a list of the open scenes. So how you would use it is first get an instance of the scene manager. This might not be straightforward, at least it wasn't for me, but that's where the examples come in handy. Then we can get the list of the scenes by calling the scenes method from our scene manager and I will immediately call help on the first element in the scenes list so we can see what we can do with this. First of all we can see that this is a CSC that view that scene instance. There are a lot of things you can do with the scenes as you can see but to keep it simple let's just call the name method to get the name of the scene as a string. Hopefully this gives you an example how you can use the console together with the sample scripts to find out what are the possibilities. Now let's get a bit deeper. So with the app sub module we can work with Cascader as the app, but if we want to manipulate our scene we need some lower level methods. Luckily by default we have a scene variable ready to use which is an instance of the currently open scene. So let's call help on it. And if you are not confused enough already you, you can see that this scene object is not the same as the previous view scene. This is the domain scene. But you can get this object through the view scene too. Anyway, we get a lot of different functions. Some of them are self-explanatory, like the get current frame, which returns an integer, or the set current frame, which expects an integer. Or there are info, warning, success, and error messages. These we can use to display info, warning, success, and error messages. No surprises here. You can use this instead of the basic print method. And you can see the difference here. It not only makes the messages in pretty colors, but in case of success, warning and error, it also displays it in the viewport. We also have a lot of different viewer methods. These are used to get data from the different parts of the scene. For example, we can get the transform values of objects. So let's go through this example. I will now, so I will add a cube as an example and move it somewhere. I will name this cube just to make it organized. So what I would like to achieve is get these global position values of our cube object. First we can use the model viewer to get info about our objects in the scene. If we want to get the cube in the scene we can use the get objects method and as you can see there are two ways of calling it. If you don't give it any input it will return every object in the scene or you can input an optional string parameter then it will give us a list of objects in the scene with this name. So let's type cube equals model your dot get objects cube and since I only have one object with the name cube, if I get the first element in the list, it will be this cube object. When you are writing scripts for Cascader, you will generally refer to things by their IDs, and it's not only true for objects. 
You can also display these IDs in the viewport by clicking in this all components visible. So if we also enable the hidden behaviors under the additional info, we will get the ID of our cube. Just to demonstrate it, we can print out the cube dot to string and this displays the same ID as we can see in the additional info. And as you can see, the behaviors also have IDs. So we found the cube in our scene, and now we need to get the behavior viewer to get the transform behavior of our cube. So I will name this variable cube ID to make it more specific and then we need the behavior viewer and this behavior viewer has a get behavior by name which we can use to get the transform behavior. So we can see that the get behavior by name method expects uh, the object ID and the name of the behavior as a string. So this will return the ID of our behavior. Then to get the value of the global position, first we need the ID of this data. We can still use the behavior ID for this. And we can copy this transfer behavior ID we just got and the name of the data. But how do you know that you need to put in the string like this? I think for me the most reliable way was to open the node editor. And on the side panel we can see all of the behaviors which belong to our object. Here if we look for the transform behavior we can see exactly how these data are named. And finally after the model viewer and the behavior viewer we also need the data viewer to get the value of this data on a given frame. Again, you could use the help function to display it, but since we saw examples for this already and it works similarly as before, let's just go ahead. So the data viewer has a get data value which requires this global position ID and then uh, the frame where we want to get the value as an integer. And then we can print out this data as a string, so I will cast it into a string first and just copy it so I don't have any, so I don't make any mistakes. And you can see that it has the same values that we can see in the viewport. And of course we can also modify this data, but I think that's enough information to get started. And we will create some animations by modifying these transformation values in the next video. So to summarize what we've learned, the Python console can be opened from Windows Python console. The printed out messages are displayed in the event logs. We can use the help function to get to know how to use the modules and methods of the API. In Cascada, viewer methods like the model viewer, behavior viewer, and data viewer are used for reading data from the scene. In Cascader, every object, behavior, data has their own ID, and we can use these IDs to access them. I have to admit it's not very straightforward how to work with the API, and the devs are aware of it, so in the future it might get a rework, but it's currently not a priority. Nevertheless, I hope this video gave you some tips how to get started with it. If the next video is already available, you can find it here and there will be a playlist for Python related videos as well. And as always, thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.